She'd see you two together. Nice to see you again, Traveler and Paimon. Oh, we're not interrupting anything, are we? <laughs> not at all. I wasn't in the middle of an interview or anything. I was just asking Miss Kuching about purchasing a kite. A kite? Are you buying some regional specialties to bring back to Fontaine? Well, yes. And... <laughs> it seems you haven't heard yet. The theme of this year's Lantern Rite is kites. Oh, so that's why Paimon has seen so many floating in the sky! Liyue Harbor is always changing, so it is only fitting that Lantern Rite should change in turn. The Qixing believes it would benefit Liyue to build on our own cultural foundation by embracing the technologies of other nations. After all, it is said that the stones of another mountain may serve to better polish one's own jade. So, Ningguang organized a private meeting with Miss Charlotte to ask for her help in fostering cooperation with the right people. In the end, we decided to combine Liyue's traditional art of kite making with Fontaine's mechanical vertical lifting device. Mechanical... lifting device? Sounds pretty impressive. Use the wind to fly? Why would you need to add something mechanical? Well, you've actually just answered your own question, Paimon. How high and far a kite can fly depends as much on the weather conditions as on the skill of the person holding the string. But as soon as there's no wind, you can only flail about helplessly like a sweet flower medaka out of water. Experience doesn't matter at that point. Exactly. Liyue is now a nation ruled by humans, after all. It's about time we had the power to make a kite fly, don't you think? Plus, the easier we can make it to enjoy, the more people will want to participate. Right? I also thought it was a novel idea. Plus, it shouldn't cost much to do. With Miss Charlotte's help, everything has gone smoothly. Our new mechanical kites are already available to purchase from a stall in the harbor. We're having trouble keeping up with demand. We also gave quite a bit of thought to the price. We didn't want it to be too much more expensive than a traditional kite. Cool! Turns out you two and Ningguang like playing with toys just as much as Paimon! Uh, toys? They're not exactly... Toys. You see, Miss Kuching, that does seem to be everyone's first reaction. Hmm. Although kites are one of our most time honored cultural relics, outside of their use in certain ceremonies, I suppose they're considered playthings more than anything now. But to me, there's so much more than that. Think for a second about how remarkable it is that a flimsy paper kite attached to a string has the capacity to touch the sky. It is this slight piece of paper that also carries the weight of Liyue's cultural traditions. There's an old poem that goes, O oh, kite born of paper, flying true and sound, a lone traveler wanders, just waiting to be found.
In the past, poets from Liyue used kites to symbolize a feeling of longing, or evoke the peacefulness of idyllic rural scenery. If the people of today can derive enjoyment from this activity, they will not only be more likely to better appreciate the tradition, but also to pass it down to the people of tomorrow. That's the Kuching we know, always thinking five steps ahead of anyone else. Well said, Miss Kuching. I've learned quite a bit myself. <laughs> as long as you're willing to listen, I'm happy to share. I also know quite a lot about the various folk traditions related to kites. For example, whenever a kite blew away, people would say it was the Adepti that summoned the wind to take it away as an offering. That way, you can turn an unfortunate event into an auspicious one. What about something... more fun? Do you know anything like that? More fun... Hmm, let me think... Oh, I suppose we should first talk about how kites are made. It's another one of our precious forms of traditional craftsmanship. My grandfather told me that, back when he was a boy, children learned the art of kite making step by step from their elders. First, you use the thin strips of bamboo to construct the frame. Then, you draw a design of your choice on a piece of paper, paste it onto the frame, and tie on the string. Then, you look towards the sky and release the kite to soar among the clouds. Some people write down certain names or desires on their kites, cut the string, and let them fly free. Others may place particular thoughts or meaning into the design itself. Are certain designs associated with certain meanings? <laughs> I'm gonna jot all of this down. Hmm. Well, for example, kites in the shape of a butterfly typically symbolize freedom, happiness, or the desire to break free. Fascinating. What else can you tell me? The scissored-tailed swallow is the most classic design. It symbolizes good fortune and joyful tidings. Different colors also have small variations in meaning. Are these commonly understood meanings and symbols in Liyue? Kind of like the language of flowers in Fontaine. Hmm, I believe so. Most have probably heard something about it from their elders at some point. If you're interested, Miss Charlotte, I have several books on the topic that I could lend you. They could be a useful reference. That would be a huge help! Great! Looks like I've got the outline for quite the article on my hands. Perfect! We're gonna take a look around! Then I'll show Miss Charlotte to my home for a little while. Ah, I almost forgot. The Ministry of Civil Affairs is hosting a kite flying contest on the night of Lantern Rite. If you're interested, you're more than welcome to bring a kite and participate. The rules are simple. Whoever flies their kite the highest and furthest within the time limit will receive a special honor along with a secret prize. I've already prepared more than enough empty film for the event. I can see the spectacle already! Oh, Paimon was on board the moment you said secret prize! <laughs> then I'll look forward to seeing your performance. Wait, Traveler? Take a peek to your right. Do you see those two people lurking over there? Is it just Paimon? Or were they staring at us the whole time we were talking to Kuching and Charlotte just now? Hmm, they seem fishy. Huh. Well, yes, but... Something's up. Paimon just has a bad feeling. Do you think they could be treasure hoarders? They always seem to be stirring up trouble during Lantern Right. Oh, Paimon's sick of waiting around for something bad to happen. We should strike first, you know. Foil their plans before they even begin. You go right, Paimon will go left. It is with such an air of urgency that you appear before us. 
Your comportment suggests you believe us to have committed some heinous crime. Perhaps you could enlighten us as to your intentions. Whoa! Where did this buddy daddy come from? You should be the one doing the enlightening, buddy! Don't think we didn't notice you eavesdropping. One look and we could tell you were up to no good. Tell us everything, starting oh. with your name! Uh... One bears no secrets before two such as yourselves. You stand in the presence of the mighty and illuminated Adeptus, Mooncarver. For the purpose of this foray into the mortal realm, however, you may address one as Hojong. You kidding? That deer's got his head stuck so far up in the clouds, there's no way he'd humble himself down here with the rest of us. Uh, <clears throat> You may want to hold your tongue, Paimon. <laughs> Don't think that Paimon is going to believe you just because you know her name. Let Paimon guess, you're supposed to be Mountain Shaper, right? Indeed. Mooncarver and myself have descended upon the mortal realm for a visit. The two of you may call me Jiavu. Ha! Huh. Looks like you did your research. But in our experience, the harder you try to lead us on, the more likely it is that we've got a big fish on our hands. Oh, we'll go straight to the Mulilith and have you arrested for impersonating a deaf guy! Preposterous! Utterly preposterous! Right! Tell us something that only an Adeptus would know. And it better not be some common knowledge that any person on the street could tell you. <sighs> You may recall that in order to preserve the tranquility of one's mountain, one planted karst crawlers around Mount Hulao. In fact, the seeds are one of Streetward Rambler's cultivars. Among all the Adepti, her horticultural skill is preeminent. The plant neither wilts nor withers, and its practical use is undeniable. Yet it does require quite the upkeep. After a while, one tires of the effort. Thus, one had no choice but to foray into town to inquire from Streetwood Rambler a gentler and more easily managed variety. On your way, you were accosted by a group of youths, and without revealing your true form, were unable to extricate yourself of their presence. If one's memory serves, Streetwood Rambler had to personally come to your rescue. Uh... How did you come into possession of such knowledge? The young lass, Yao Yao, keeps no secrets from Cloud Retainer. Ah, <sighs> alas, one can only let bygones be bygones. Ah, uh, that might have been more detail than we needed. Seems like you two are the real deal, and I'm sorry for suspecting you. But, uh, for beings as forgiving as yourselves, this is just water under the bridge, right? You indeed have an agile mind. Cloud Retainer was not mistaken in her high estimation of you. Paimon's still curious about something. It's just... Paimon can understand why Mountain Shaper is here, but... Why did you decide to come to the city, Mooncarver? It's not really your thing, is it? Hmm. <sighs> it is but, but an inevitable, inevitable eventuality. eventuality. Long have the mountains remained strangely idle since Cloud Retainer's move to Liu at Harbor. With Lantern Rite near at hand, one would expect Cloud Retainer to provide us with an account of the festivities in advance. Yet to this day, she has failed to appear. Cloud Retainer is hardly the forgetful sort. One must never rest idle in the face of that which demands action. And since our acquaintances dwell in Liu at Harbor, we had to travel here in human form to avail ourselves of their aid, Cloud Retainers in this case. But a moment ago, one heard you speak of a mechanical kite of sorts. It appears the essence of the situation has hitherto revealed itself. Now it is time for one to retire back to one's abode. Huh. So you're not looking for Cloud Retainer anymore? Perhaps there are aspects of Cloud Retainer's temperament that remain opaque to young Paimon. Given one's understanding, one can only imagine the anger that now consumes her. Cloud Retainer is of a proud and arrogant disposition. 
She holds the belief that her skill in mechanics surpasses that of all others. One can be quite certain it is hardly with an open mind that she regards the arrival of this new technology. One surmises that she has shut herself away, refused all company, and buried herself in the study of her own creations. To call on her would only invite her rebuke. However, if you do happen to cross paths with her over the next few days, do pass along one's regards. Sure! Leave it to us! Have a safe trip back, enjoy the scenery, and happy lantern right! Thank you for your kind words. We shall now depart. <sighs> we got all worked up for nothing, huh? All that trouble and it turned out to be people we knew all along! Well, it's still pretty early. Let's head over and check out the kite stalls! Paimon wants to see what kinds of kites we can buy to use in the competition! The bigger and prettier, the better! Oh, welcome! Are the two of you looking to buy a kite? Would you like me to go over the different designs? This jade chamber design is our newest. It's been selling like crazy over the past two days. Does it also have a unique meaning? Of course. The jade chamber symbolizes wealth and abundance. The kite bearing its design is said to bring riches in the future to those who fly it. Oh, now that's Paimon's kind of kite! I apologize for the interruption, but are all your wares in order, Miss Genuine? Oh, yes, yes, they're just over there. The paper, bamboo, and dyes. All the necessary kite-making materials. Wonderful! I'll pack them up and get a guard to deliver the goods to Yilong Wharf for you. Yilong Wharf? Oh, wonder what that place is like during Lantern Rite. Paimon would love to go take a look. Well, if the two of you are interested in going to Yilong Wharf, then could I trouble you to find Gaming and deliver these goods together? guard you just mentioned? Yes. The communications office handles shipments and transports around Liyue. He works for the Secure Transport Agency, one of our sub-organizations. Uh, the problem is, many of my colleagues have taken leave during Lantern Rite to spend time with their families. So, our available workforce has seen a dramatic decrease recently. If you were willing to help out, then I could get a head start on my next appointment. I seem really pressed for time. Oh, wonderful. Uh, you will, of course, be compensated for your efforts. Now, at this time of day, Gaming should be somewhere in the vicinity. But just follow the main road until you see the head of a Wusho dance costume. Should be on your right. Be sure to come back if you'd like to buy a kite. I'll even give you a discount. By the way, do you know my aunt? Everyone calls her Granny Shan. I've heard her mention Gaming before. Apparently he's a nice outgoing fellow and all around good guy. Wait, I thought we had an agreement. A loser buys dim sum tomorrow? <laughs> Look at you! Scowl like that for much longer and your face might stay that way. Hey now, don't be upset. How about this? You extend the invitation, and I'll pay. Uh, no way, Gaming. You're always the one picking up the tab. I'm not trying to be a sore loser, I just didn't expect you to come from behind a win like that. <laughs> that was nothing. All in a day's work, friend. Perfect! Gaming is here! Sorry to interrupt, Gaming. We just spoke to a guy from the communications office who needs you to deliver some goods to Elon Wharf. Oh, that must have been Longjo. Looks like I've got work. We gotta go. Sure, go do your thing. Uh, let's have a rematch when you get back. I won't let you win so easily next time. 
Alrighty, you can hand the goods over to me. Must have been heavy hauling them all this way. Let me take them off your hands. Oh, it wasn't that bad. It's just some kite making materials. Plus, we didn't have to walk very far. Kite making materials. I see, I see. I'm glad it wasn't too much trouble, Paimon. Still, I owe you one. Ah, and you must be the traveler. It's nice to meet you. Thanks for your help. Huh? You know us? <laughs> there probably aren't many in Liyue who don't. I've heard quite a bit about you two. You're quite well known around these parts. Oh, and please excuse Longzhou if he forgot to thank you. Uh, take my thanks in his place. He's a good guy. He's just been super busy lately, running around from place to place. Don't be too hard on him, yeah? So, you here for Lantern, right? Yep. It's always so lively this time of year. We were actually hoping we could tag along to Elon Wharf and have a look around. Perfect! We'll go together then! I'm good with directions, so just follow me. Trust me, I know my way around. We can exchange stories, tell jokes, or just chat along the way. Oh, and there are a couple of good places to eat along our route. We can stop and grab a bite when it's time. The ingredients are fresh, the portions are generous, and the prices won't break the bank. You can order anything, and I promise, you won't be disappointed. Order anything? Hey, did you really have to call Paimon out like that in front of our new friend? <laughs> Don't worry, I understand. I joke around like that with my friends, too. It just shows how close you are. Do you need to pack anything up before we hit the road? I can wait. Nope, our things are always packed and ready. We're pretty much travel experts at this point. Oh, that's right. Then let's get going. If we run into any trouble, you can count on me to protect you. I am a guard, after all.
Why do so many people make such a big deal out of seeking the Adepti? There's Adepti everywhere, isn't there? Thank <laughs> you. 
What's the hurry? Ad Astra Abyssosk. Thank you for completing. Ad Astra Abyssosk. Ugh. <sighs> 
Oh, you're back! Jeez, guys, where'd you go? One moment you were there, the next you disappeared. You scared the life out of me. Uh, we're so sorry. We were just... Uh, uh, it's kind of hard to explain. Uh, fair enough. <laughs> well, the mountain road is pretty hazardous, and it's easy to get lost in the fog. So from here on out, stay close to me. The docks are just a bit further. One step at a time. Hang in there. Wait, and get behind me. I'll handle this. Yeah, it's not uncommon for deliveries to get intercepted. That's why this job needs guards like us. Paimon was impressed by your moves back there. You seem like a real pro at your job. Oh, <laughs> that's not a skill I learned on the job. It's just a hobby. Have you ever heard of wushou dancing? Really? Wushou dancing is famous in Chenyu Vale. Performers might be invited to promote the opening of a business or to spread good fortune during a holiday season. But I must admit, it has nothing on the popularity of the Li Yue Opera. I'm also well aware that people in Li Yue Harbor aren't exactly jumping at the chance to watch wushou dancing, so it's not something I do full time. Huh? You have two jobs? How do you have the energy to do all that? <laughs> it's not that tiring. You just have to take a rest. Ah, Paimon gets it, so you must sleep a lot then. Not really. Just yesterday I stayed up all night playing cards. Oh. Uh... Let's go. The docks are just up ahead. Sorry, sorry. Did I push the pace a bit too much? 
I mean, you were the ones who said you were travel experts. Lou is just too hilly. Floating up and down so much, where's Paimon now? Oh, Paimon was finally satisfied and now her poor stomach's empty again. Aw, would you like some winter melon cake? I have some on me that I bought from a store. Yes, Paimon will take all you got. Uh, you might want to pace yourself there or you'll be too full to eat a proper meal later. Paimon never gets too full. Just like... Oh, just like you apparently never get tired, no matter how far you walk or how many jobs you work. Ah, I see. Then here you go, Paimon. And for you, Traveler. Enjoy! And here's some for you too, Uncle Bosu. Don't think I forgot about you, my friend. I'll just set it to the side here for you. She was going to starve to death for a minute there. <laughs> that close of a call, huh? Huh. <sighs> I've been eating winter melon cake ever since I was a kid. You can buy them from all sorts of places, whether it's a small vendor on the side of the road or a big restaurant in the city. But each place produces cakes with a slightly different flavor. If you like these ones, I can give you the address of the shop I bought them from. I'll just have to check when we get back. <laughs> oh, oh. All my jabbering must be making it difficult for you to enjoy the scenery in peace, huh? Don't be afraid to tell me to zip it for a little while, okay? Really, I won't be offended. It's okay. Paimon is kind of enjoying listening to your chitter-chatter. Aw, a fed Paimon is a happy Paimon, huh? <laughs> hey, Paimon can be in a good mood anytime she wants! <laughs> Fresh bamboo for this. Woohoo! We're here! Don't forget your things and uh, watch your step as you get off the raft or you're in for a swim. Thanks for the ride, Uncle Bosu. You take care of yourself now. I'll see you some other time. Okay, follow me. This way is fastest. We'll have to take the elevator up to the secure transport agency. Slow down. I'm begging you. What is it? Uh, it sure would be no nice. No one's gonna try any funny business when the street is this packed, right? Oh, well... Uh, 
How should I put it? Come on, spit it out! Do you see that group of people over there? Those are my relatives. Wow, you sure have a big family. Once they start buying things, they won't stop perusing till it gets dark. Oh, this is bad. <sighs> They're your family, not your arch enemies. What's there to be afraid of? Unless... Oh, did you do something horrible to them? No, it's not that. I'm just... not that good at dealing with my family. It would be best if we could steer clear of them. I'll explain more when we have the chance, but right now, we've got a job to do. Mm, the left side looks pretty packed. Let's go straight. Slow and steady wins the race. Let's wait here for a second. Maybe my aunt will leave. She's gone! Let's go! Wow, you guys are good. I'm impressed. That was nothing. It was a piece of cake. Oh, winter melon cake to be exact. <laughs> you really liked it, huh? Ooh, you know what? I'll buy you a whole bunch and pile them so high you can swim in them. As long as you don't wind up drowning, Paimon. <laughs> hey, Uncle Drigwe. These are my friends, the Traveler and Paimon. They came to deliver some goods with me. So, I guess I'll go ahead and take these over to Uncle Yongzan then? Yes. Thanks for your hard work. I should thank you both for your trouble as well. Please take a seat and rest for a bit. I'll prepare some tea. No need. We'll be off soon anyway. Hey, we're already here, aren't we? No harm in taking a load off for a bit. Plus, I know the Secure Transport Agency has some great Songwa tea stashed around here somewhere. I promise you, one sip and you'll be hooked. Anyway, you just sit down and relax, Uncle Jirgwe. Who would I be if I just sat here and let you go through all this trouble? Leave this to me. I have to be up and about to drop these goods off anyway. What's a little extra time on my feet? Oh, you aren't too picky, right, Traveler? I know Paimon prefers things on the sweeter side, so I won't steep the tea too long. And I'll add some dim sum pastries on the side. How long have you two known Gami? Oh, not long at all. We just kind of tagged along on his trip to Yilong Wharf. He's just a super welcoming guy. We became friends. You know, just like that. <laughs> That's just how he is. He's the attentive sort. Really knows how to look after his own. A while ago, one of our guards had to take off work. Said his joints were hurting due to the rain. Gaming personally went all the way to Bubu Pharmacy to get some medicine for him from Dr. Baiju, then traveled through the night to deliver it back to him. That young man has such a good head on his shoulders. How can anyone not love him? I mean, there is his dad, but, well, ask anyone else. And... Uncle Yongzan says he doesn't have the personnel to spare for this delivery right now. So what do you think, Uncle Jirigwe? Should I go ahead and deliver it instead? Ah, <sighs> it feels like we've troubled you enough already. It's kite-making materials, though. Could be for a kid. I'm sure the sender wants it delivered before Lantern Ray. Oh, uh, by the way, here, have some tea. 
All right, then. Deliver it if you want to. Ooh, are you free in two days? How about we grab some dim sum from Xinyue Kiosk? My treat, and don't even think about trying to pay. Whoa, that's way too generous of you. Ah, uh, don't mention it. Just think of this as a thank you for all your help. Besides, the thing between me and my family... It's a long story. It might take some time to tell. Sounds good! Paimon never says no to free food. Alright, then I'm off. See you in two days. Oh, and Paimon, make sure not to eat too much before then. Don't say I didn't warn you! Is he underestimating Paimon? <laughs> She's just gonna have to show him how much she can really eat. Anyway, is Gobin's family situation really that complicated? He has such a happy-go-lucky personality. Plus, he's an enthusiastic and diligent worker. It's hard to imagine a guy like that being troubled by much. Hmm, how should I put it? Since he already plans to tell you himself, you don't need an old man like me to add my two cents. You seem to be around the same age, so you might have a lot in common. Perhaps you could help him talk things through. Consider it a favor to me. If you have the time, maybe you can make a little flag for us to wave about. It can say, we provide aid in spades. Couldn't hurt to advertise our services, right? Well, <laughs> I can certainly arrange that. Is there anything else you wanted to say? Wait, seriously? Paimon was just joking, but if you're going to get us something, she'd much rather have winter melon cake instead. <laughs> yeah, it seems like Gaming really has rubbed off on you. Would you like some more tea? I think there's some left. No thanks. We came all this way and still haven't gotten a chance to look around the wharf. We should see the kinds of kites they got. Maybe they'll have ones you can't find in Liyue Harbor. All right, then. Please do let me know if you'd like more tea. You're welcome to stay as long as you like. One might have presumed you were displeased to be in one's presence. Take note, Paimon. You could learn a thing or two about how to respect your elders. Ugh, starting on the elder stuff already, huh? Shouldn't you be back in your cave tinkering away at some kite-related thingamabob or something? What brings you out here? And what's with that huge box next to you? Ah! Paimon gets it. You're here to do some shopping, aren't you? And what of it? The Qixing's decision to integrate Fontanian technology into said kite-flying competition is of no consequence to oneself. Did you expect one to willfully compete against the whimsical trends of worldly sentiment, or perhaps even fall to petty sulking over such? Um, it's not that we think those things exactly. That's just what Mountain Shaper and Mooncarver told us, or Tia something and Ho. Paimon can't be bothered to remember what their aliases were called. Anyway, they went to Liyue Harbor to look for you. They even asked us to pass along their regards if we ran into you. Oh, huh. Tianyin? Huh. Huh, oh, it appears time has quite flown since one's arrival in Liyue Harbor. How could one have forgotten about those two old fossils? <sighs> One shall have to bring them back some divine herbs to atone for this slight. Nay, 
Given that one has ventured all this way to Yilong Wharf, tea would be more advisable. A great thought has illuminated one's mind once again. One is reminded that certain purchases have yet to be made. Perhaps you two could wait here whilst one performs this task. It'll be but a moment. Huh? Wait here? You really just gonna ditch us here to watch your stuff? Oh, that woman really just does whatever she wants. Welcome. Please have a look around. We only sell teas of the finest quality, sourced directly from Chaoying Village. Might I recommend the Sunglo variety? It's one of our specialties. Now, that sounds promising. One will bring some back for those old fossils, and all will be well. Two boxes will do. Wonderful. By the way, we're actually running a special Lantern Rite promotion. Buy three boxes, get 10% off. Four boxes will net you 20% off. Hmm. 20% off four boxes. This merchant strikes a fair bargain. One might as well give some to Morax and Ping, too. Then four shall suffice. Hmm, I see. Are you intending to give these as gifts? If so, perhaps I can interest you in these exquisite gift sets. Buy ten, get half off. Look at the magnificent design, and the red ribbon gives quite the festive flair, don't you think? Such a gift would be sure to impress any lucky friend or family member. Hmm, ten boxes. Seems rather excessive. But if one factors in the conqueror of demons and one's disciples... Hmm... Ten! A nice round number, don't you think? Of Course you do. I'll even shave a little extra off the price for you. That is agreeable. One will, um, I will have these boxed up then. Of course, of course, right away. I see you have quite the eye for fine items, mademoiselle. Perhaps some of my wares might also be of interest to you. I'm a toy merchant from Fontaine. You'll get nothing but the finest and most intricate clockwork toys Mora can buy here. Each one sure to be a source of endless amusement. Hmm. Perhaps you could enlighten me then. When should said amusement be derived? Well, uh, that is, of course, best understood by playing with them yourself. If you could wait just a moment, I can bring one out and give you a demonstration. <laughs> there is no need for that. Uh, mademoiselle. Give me your newest and finest model, and be sure to package it securely. Ah, of course. Here you go. The instruction manual is... I can do without. Thank you. Oh, many watchful eyes surround this place. If one were to be spotted purchasing a mechanical toy such as this, a child's plaything no less, it would only invite scandal. There is no harm in bringing it back to study in secret. Naturally. One may not delight in social interactions, but that does not mean one lacks such faculties. And you too? Are you not here to purchase things? We just haven't had time yet. It doesn't look like there are any kite stalls around Elong Wharf, but it does look like there are lots of goods from Fontaine. You are also planning to participate in the kite flying competition, then? <clears throat> One means to say, you along with all the other youths. 
One has been entreated to share one's kite-making expertise, and indeed there was little one could do about such persistent supplication. One moment energetic and earnest, and dejected the next. One had no choice but to acquiesce to these requests, and thus, one will be organizing a kite-making workshop to provide personal instruction in this art form. Oh, who will be participating then? Shuyu, Shenhe, Ganyu, and Yayo. Wow, that's quite a few people. Also, this is all pretty well, Xinyun, but it's not like you have to make your own kite to participate in the competition. You can't just buy one ready-made and call it a day. Ha! Huh. You speak of those equipped with the mechanical lifting device, do you not? <sighs> Tis nothing but a crude piece of mortal machinery. The mechanism that one has developed was the fruit of millennia, of meticulous study. Let us not speak of the source of the mechanism's power, but rather its structure. It is composed of materials as light as bamboo and as strong as iron. This composition grants it the lightness of weight to ascend into the sky and the durability to follow the wind for many a mile. It is built with a series of intersecting rods that... <sighs> Never mind. It is unlikely the two of you will understand, even should one expend the effort to explain. One is better off saving one's breath. It sure seems like you want to talk about it, though. So, will you be attending the workshop or not? Huh? Wait, you've been trying to invite us this entire time? All right then. No need to prepare the materials in any case. One has it all sorted. Arrive at Mount Outsong in two days. I shall be expecting you around midday. Are you leaving? Don't you want a guard to help you with that big box of yours? <laughs> Surely you jest. One goes as one pleases. For what reason would one need to rely on another? Uh, it can float? What kind of invention is that? One calls it the floating toting device. Look at her walk down the street. She seems so confident, but everyone around her is looking at her all funny. Paimon wonders... Uh, never mind. But anyway, that box of hers seems to be full of those mechanical lifty thimba bobs. Uh, not that Paimon was peeking or anything. She just, uh, got a bit unsteady for a second and accidentally brushed the embroidery on top. And wouldn't you know it, all the stuff inside almost came bursting out! Paimon even went out of her way to keep it all together. All Paimon say is that Shenyun sure does try hard to save face. What did she call it again? A crude piece of mortal machinery? Paimon bet she just can't wait to take it apart and see how it's made. Totally! We should probably act like we didn't see anything, though. You know, in consideration of her feelings and all. After all, that is the propriety with which one should comport oneself. When it comes to an elder, right? Great discounts on loads of goods.
time with the spinas, huh? See that carrying an unreliable weapon, it's... Worse than not carrying one at all. Ah. <sighs> 